How do you visit with your friends and family when you're not with them? Do you call or text them on your phone? Maybe you use a computer or a tablet for a video chat. But what did people do before those things were invented? Let's find out. You could write a letter, but that would take days or weeks for the message to be delivered. How could you get someone a message immediately? You couldn't, until Samuel Morse invented the telegraph, that is. Samuel Finley Brees Morse was born in Charleston, Massachusetts on April 27, 1791. His parents were Reverend Jedediah Morse and Elizabeth Finley Morse. They had 11 children, but only three sons, Samuel, Richard, and Sidney, grew to adulthood. Samuel was the oldest. The family called him Finley. Like many families of that time, they felt that a boarding school was the best place for their children to receive a good education. They sent Finley to live at a boarding school when he was just seven years old. Through the years, Finley received many letters from his father. Finley finished his basic schooling and then enrolled in Yale College in 1805. His favorite subjects were natural philosophy and chemistry. In between classes, and sometimes during class, Finley would draw and doodle. He earned money by painting portraits of his classmates and professors. Jedediah recognized his son's talent, but felt the purpose of art was purely amusement. After he graduated in 1810, Finley wanted to go to Europe to study art, but his parents did not agree. It made him sad, but Finley respected his parents. He went back home to work in a bookstore. After a few months, his parents realized how serious Finley was about his painting and agreed that he could go to Europe to study art. Finley left for London on July 13, 1811. He studied painting and sculpture and received many honors and awards, including a gold medal for his painting, Dying Hercules. He wrote his father a letter saying he thought he would become successful soon, but it didn't work out that way. Finley came back to Massachusetts in 1815. He was determined to work as an artist and opened a studio in Boston. People came to see his paintings and admired them but still went away without ordering any. He wanted to paint big, important historical paintings, but these were not the jobs that came his way. Since he was a very good portrait painter, he went from one big city to another to paint portraits of people. In Concord, New Hampshire, Morris met the lovely Lucretia Walker. They were married in 1818 and eventually had four children. Susan, 1819, Elizabeth, 1820, who died at two weeks old, Charles, 1823, and James, 1825. They were very happy together. He was still traveling and starting to get some important painting jobs to support his family. In 1819, Morse painted the portrait of President James Monroe. In 1822, Morse painted an amazing picture of the United States House of Representatives. Morse really liked large paintings. This one was about 7 feet tall and 11 feet wide and contained 80 individual portraits. Things were going a little better now. In 1825, Morse received a commission to paint the portrait of Lafayette, a man he very much admired. He wrote a letter to Lucretia to tell her about it. But that very same day, just three weeks after baby James was born, his father was writing a letter to him, too. My affectionately beloved son, mysterious are the ways of providence. My heart is in pain and deeply sorrowful while I announce to you the sudden and unexpected death of your dear, deservedly loved wife. Morse left immediately, traveling by stagecoach. By the time he got home, Lucretia was already buried. 
She was only 25 years old. About this same time, the National Academy of Design was organized and Morse was made president. Even so, about four years after Lucretia died, Morse sold his belongings and his house, left his three children with family members, and went back to Europe. While in Paris, Morse painted his masterpiece, The Gallery of the Louvre. It is a painting of paintings and is six feet tall and nine feet wide. While in Europe, Morse became fascinated with a communication system called the semaphore telegraph. Flags were used to quickly relay messages over a distance. It made him think about how things might have been different if he had received a message about Lucretia sooner. On a return trip to the United States aboard the packet ship Sully, there was a dinner conversation about recent experiments with electricity traveling through wires. Morse always kept detailed notes of his ideas and drawings. He showed those notes to his fellow passengers. That turned out to be a bad idea. One of the people on board tried to claim the invention as their own, causing years of court cases. Morse wasn't really a scientist, but had already invented a few things. It was hard work, but he kept at it. He worked on his ideas for a day and many sleepless nights. His brothers owned a newspaper, the New York Observer, and its building. They gave Morse a fifth-story room which he used for a bedroom, kitchen, studio, and workshop. His cot was on one side, and on the other side were his tools and machine. He whittled models and made molds and castings. Morse was one of the inventors of the machine called an electromagnetic telegraph. It used electricity to start and stop a signal through a wire. Then Morse and Alfred Vail created an alphabet code of dots and dashes, which we now call Morse code. In 1835, Morse was appointed professor of literature of the art of design at New York City University. He lived in third-floor rooms in a university building. By 1837, he finished up the last of his paintings and concentrated on his invention. He found business partners and scientists to help him improve his invention. Morse made several trips to Europe to apply for patents for his telegraph. During a trip in 1839, he met with Louis Daguerre, one of the founders of photography. Morse demonstrated the telegraph to Daguerre, and Daguerre demonstrated photography to Morse. Morse immediately saw how important photography could be. He brought one of Daguerre's cameras to the United States. Daguerre sent the directions on how to make a photograph. Morse was one of the first photographers in America. In one of the university buildings, he built the first studio to teach photography in the United States. He worked in the studio for two years and trained many new photographers, including Matthew Brady. Then he returned to improving and demonstrating his telegraph full time. He improved and exhibited his invention for five more years. He showed it to the Committee on Commerce in Congress. They came to watch, but didn't think it would work. Morse had hoped that Congress would move forward with his plan but almost another year went by and they did nothing. Finally, in 1843, Congress passed a bill granting him $30,000 to build a trial long distance telegraph line from Baltimore, Maryland to Washington, DC. On May 24th, 1844, Morse sent the first telegraph message on that line. It was the phrase, what hath God wrought? It had been 12 long years since he first had his idea. Now everyone wanted telegraph lines to their town, too, and soon telegraph lines crisscrossed the nation. Morse's invention of the telegraph made him wealthy. In 1847, he purchased an estate named Locust Grove with a big house and 100 acres near Poughkeepsie, New York. In 1848, he married Sarah Griswold. It was a happy marriage, and they had four children. Morse's older children, now grown, sometimes stayed there too. 
Morris was a modest, kind man who was fond of flowers and animals. One of his pets was a tame flying squirrel that would sit on his shoulders, eat out of his hand, and go to sleep in his pocket. His daughter Susan, now a married woman, wrote of her father, He loved flowers. He would take one in his hand and talk for hours about its beauty, its wonderful construction, and the wisdom and love of God in making so many varied forms of life and color to please our eyes. Morse donated money to many causes he felt were important. He supported schools for the deaf in honor of his wife, Sarah. Morse had a strong faith in God and encouraged that faith in others. In addition to art, photography, and his inventions, Morse was also interested in politics. He even ran for mayor of New York City two times, but lost both times. His opinions on immigration and slavery were typical of his time, but would not be acceptable today. Samuel Finley Brees Morse died April 2nd, 1872, three weeks before his 81st birthday. After his death, his paintings were finally recognized as masterpieces, but the telegraph system that brought him wealth and fame is no longer used. Samuel Morse certainly accomplished much in his lifetime. Let me know in the comments below what you found most interesting or surprising.